It is Friday, May the 21st. Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. Great to have you with us. We've got your HCC news and information coming up for the next half hour. And hey, it's the weekend. A lot of new movie releases. Yeah, you haven't heard that in a while, but we're going to talk more about that. And we've got a very special guest to kick off the show. Frank Cooper is my co-host. He's joining me this morning. Frank, good to see you on this finally Friday. Happy Friday, boss, man. How you living, man? I'm loving the blazer, man. You look kind of snazzy over there. I, I knew you were on the show, so I figured I'd wear a blazer, you know, and uh, just just for today. But uh, you've got a big announcement at the end of the show because you are going to make your NBA Finals prediction. Indeed I am, Todd. So y'all stay tuned, man. And and that, that's the ultimate teaser, man. Todd yeah. is a newsroom, man, but he's never, he still has the newsroom skills, man, with these teases and stuff. Well, we try our best, Frank, and keep me on my toes. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit of sports later on in the show, so stick around for that. But uh, we've got some social media reminders for folks. Absolutely, man. There's no excuse to miss our show up to the minute. We're on YouTube. Search Houston Community College up to the minute. Hit the no, uh, notification bell for all about four episodes. And we're also on, on social media as well. So Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, all the major social media platforms, man. So let's grow the show. HC Universe hashtag. All right. H, I like that. HCC Universe hashtag. It. Okay. All right, Frank, stick around. We'll check in with you in a little while. Uh, we've got a couple of special guests. It's Film Friday, and we've got a guest joining us from Culture Map, the film critic, Alex Bentley. Good to see you, Alex. Good morning. How are you today? It's gr- I'm doing great, and it's going to be a big movie. You know, you don't have nowadays many weekends where we have a lot of good movie releases, but this is going to be a good one. Yeah, they're starting to get released more and more, and it's getting exciting to go back to the theaters again. That's right. So we've got a number of films we're going to talk about. Alex, get a cup of coffee. We'll check in with you in a few minutes. So uh, we're looking forward to talking with you. We're going to kick things off with Dr. Jimmy Adams. You know him. You love him. He's always here once a month. Uh, He's the chief operations officer, the COO out at the Northeast College, but also our resident poet. Good morning, Dr. Adams. There we go. Good morning. How's it going, Jimmy? I'm good. How's everybody? Good to see everybody. We are doing great. You know, it's uh, I imagine you're a you're a pretty busy guy right now because you got students coming back in a couple of weeks. Um, I know you've had a number of them there doing the lab classes, but now you're going to do face to face classes as we are across the district. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to, you know, bring back some faculty and some staff back on the 24th on Monday. And then the classes start, I think, June 7. So we'll look, we're, I think we're all prepared. We're, we've got all our labs and everything set up. Um, and we're pretty much ready to go. And we're excited to, you know, see, you know, students back on campus again. That's very exciting. And I know our students are going to be happy to get back on those campuses. Dr. Adams, um, you write poetry and uh, certainly some meaningful pieces. And, you know, it's I, I, I find it hard to believe, but, uh, you know, it was about almost a year ago uh, that we had the murder of George Floyd. The yeah. trend of the trials is over now, but the news is still seemingly it's all over in the news every day. And uh, it's a reminder that that remains in our minds, um, burned in our minds forever. And you've got a piece uh, that you've written about this. Yes, I did. And it's called It's a Matter of Life. Um, and I'm actually... Uh, working on another piece, and, and I'm trying to come up with the, with a title. It's either uh, an anthem for justice or the blues for justice, something like that. But it's it's in relations to you know the verdict and and the things co- that continue to happen around uh, the, this you know this this case, this George Floyd and Black Lives Matter thing, right. Um, well, maybe you can tell us a bit about the piece you're going to uh, okay. do for us today. And, and okay. Well, I, I wanted to do this piece today. You know, I had, uh, you know, uh, you know, there, there, since the trial and the guilty verdict uh, around George Floyd, that even during that time, there still been some, you know, some incidents uh, with some young black men, uh, Andrew Brown, uh, Dante Wright. Uh, Rashad Brooks, um, you know, this this continues to happen uh, to um, black males. And, uh, you know, we've got to address this. I think it's just, it, it continues to be an issue. And uh, so this piece that I wrote 
Um, this was, you know, back during the George Floyd deal um, a while back, but it's still relevant uh, to what we're experiencing right now in society. So, um, so I'll go ahead and I'll, uh, my little lead in kind of alludes to some of the statistics and then I'll go into the piece. That sounds good. Let's hear okay. it. All right. Um, uh, statistics confirm that in America, blacks are 30% more likely than whites to be pulled over by the police. And after pulled over, blacks are three times more likely to be searched than whites, and blacks are twice as likely to be shot by police as whites. We all should be troubled by the fatal shootings and senseless killings of black males in the, the world today. Our hearts go out to their families and the communities who have suffered such a painful loss. Uh, police brutality and injustice is a serious issue that must be addressed. It is a sign of the times and there are too, too many innocent black men and people dying. So this is a problem we must all face together because all lives matter. And so this is my reflection of this reality. It's titled, It's a Matter of Life. So Nathan, go ahead and cue the music. Shots ring out. Another brother is dead. A cry I can't breathe. In this day and time, it's hard to believe. Cities in turmoil. The country is on the edge. Everywhere you go, people running scared. Panic increasing. Trigger happy policing. Fear is spreading. Where are we heading? Protests in the streets, violence everywhere. Does anybody really care? Mass shootings, riots, looting, America up in arms, no police reform. Race relations, demonstrations, retaliations, assassinations. Can we save this nation? If there's no justice, there will be no peace. This senseless killing has got to cease. It shouldn't matter the color of your skin. It shouldn't matter the neighborhood you live in. It shouldn't matter the clothes you wear. It shouldn't matter if you braid your hair. You can punish with brutality. Life is not a fatality. We all are prisoners to society, lost in vanity, disposed to humanity, justifying insanity. The life has no color. Blood only runs red. We should not live our lives in fear, afraid. This assault on our brothers is real. It's too late to ask Trayvon Martin, Alton Sterling, or Orlando Castile. Police committing crimes, arrested, then let go. The world won't tolerate this injustice anymore. Black men being murdered at the hands of white cops. Protests in our streets will continue until this stuff stops. This attack on our brothers won't go away. It's too late to ask Aubrey, George Floyd, or Freddie Gray. Colin, he stood up by taking a knee to bring attention to this injustice happening to brothers like you and me. Your lives matter. You did not die in vain. So God help us in this pain. Because this senseless killing, it just ain't right. Together we all must stand and fight. Because it is a matter of life, a sign of the time. There's far too many innocent people dying. People are fighting. Brothers dying. Mothers crying. It's a matter of life. 
We all got to stand and fight. We all got to make this right. Because black lives matter. White lives matter. Your life matters. My life matters. Their lives matter. All lives matter. Because it is a matter of life. It's a matter of life. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Adams. I see Frank there. Uh, Frank, I want to bring you into the conversation, and uh, uh, maybe you have a few words for Dr. Adams or a question. Yeah, um, it's. I think it's so important to. Hit, first of first of all, Doctor, your, your your poems as usual are powerful and emotionally jaggering. But when you said the names of the of one few of the many that have been slain over the last, I want to say almost twelve years now. Yeah, I think it's important to acknowledge that we don't want these names just to be names on sheet of paper or go in vain. We want these to be learning lessons and learning tools going forward on how to, when, when it comes to from police training, when it comes to, you know, adhering to, 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 to state and federal laws of how to avoid such, such catastrophes. And those names you listed, it, it took me back to a moment in time where I, how I felt angry, I felt defeated, I felt hopeless. And I, and I think the goal is to hopefully evolve that into into saving future lives, whether it's on the police on, on the on the law enforcement side or the or the or the you know the bystander side as well. And you know I, I just I just hope that we we're, we're putting together protocols and procedures on both sides of the spectrum to make sure that this doesn't happen again and again and again. Well, well said and. Um... You know those 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 three names that I mentioned: uh, Andrew Brown and Dante Wright, Rashad Brooks. Those are recent, since the uh, guilty verdict uh, with in the George Floyd trial. So, but there had but but the turn with that verdict, there has been some justice, uh, and so that new piece that I'm writing uh, is in reflection to that. Um, and we all got to work together with this because it seems like it's not going away. You know, I got a, I was stopped the other day, and this is kind of why I want to do this today. Um, and, you know, I'm accused of doing this, but I felt I didn't do that. But I'm sitting there, you know, this is a motorcycle cop. So, he, you know, cops would usually come up and they just kind of be real friendly. This cop was kind of standing off from my car. You know, he's a friend. I mean, you're you're the police, and you're afraid, you know, to talk to me, you know, to ask me for my license, you know, and so I didn't really want to say anything or question why I was being stopped because of all this stuff around, you know, what's going on in our society. So, but I can feel the, but I felt the tension from the police officer. You know, it's almost like he's afraid to even, uh, you know, uh, engage me, and it shouldn't be that way. I mean, hey, you know, I should be able to question it. You know, I, I didn't think I did that. I mean, I should be able to question that and, you know, and say, hey, well, sir, you didn't, you know, but we're going to have to write you and give you a ticket and go on, you know, right. through the day and read me my rights and all of that. So it's still, this. there's still some tension and there's still some things we got to work on. Uh, around this, and it's pretty sad, really, um, to be, you know, to have that in the back of your mind as you go through uh, today. So, um, so hopefully, folks who are listening uh, to just try to bring some awareness around this. Uh, it's not just happening here; it's all over, you know, the United States, and and I think a lot of more people are involved to try to come come up with a solution. So. Um, Dr. Adams, incredible piece, uh, as usual. You hit the nail on the head and uh, very powerful words to, uh, to make us all think. Dr. Jimmy Adams, Chief Operations Officer at Northeast College, thanks for being here this morning. Frank, thanks for uh, bringing up uh, uh, what you did and, and uh, sharing your thoughts with us. Absolutely. Y'all be safe and uh, 
We'll see you guys next week. Looking forward to get back on campus. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Take care, you guys. All right, we're going to move on and talk about uh, some things we have coming up this weekend. And movies are back in theaters. Believe it or not, they're back. And there's a full schedule of movies being released. We've got uh, Alex with us. Alex Bentley is from Culture Map Houston. He's the film critic. Good to see you, Alex. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. And uh, first, I want to thank Dr. Adams. So that poem was very beautiful and powerful. So. It, it certainly was in, incredible. He comes up with some great stuff that he, he shares with us. Um, Alex, we want to talk about some movies in theaters. I know Frank's going to be excited about a few of these. Uh, let's start off with S Spiral because this is uh, the latest in the Saw sequel. Is that right? That's right. Uh, you know, I'll be honest. I'm not the world's biggest horror fan. Uh, it's not that I scare easily. Uh, I just think most of them are kind of lazy and uninventive. Yeah. Uh, Agreed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a return to the world of Saw, this time with Chris Rock as the lead detective uh, trying to hunt down a killer who's going after cops. Uh, movies like this have always been for a certain kind of moviegoer and their willingness to endure the sight of torture for entertainment. Yeah. Uh, this one certainly delivers the goods in that regard, but oh. to call it enjoyable would be a big stretch. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't say I watched the first Saw movie. I, I didn't really have any interest in seeing any of the others. You know, it just looked brutal and just not any fun for me. Frank, are you a fan of those? I was a fan of the first couple ones, um, but after a while, like, it gets mundane after a while. I mean, it, it was very creative during that time. Um, but I, I mean, spoiler alert, I mean, I think the guy died of cancer, I want to say, but they kept on finding a way to keep it going. I'm like, okay, this is, hey, hey, they've been able to do that with Friday the 13th for right. like 35 years. Okay. Right? <laughs> you know, and Halloween as well. Um, Alex, one of them I'm very excited about, uh, army of the dead. Uh, but this isn't your George Romero zombie movie. No, no, it, it, Zack Snyder, you know, he directed uh, Dawn of the Dead a, a, a way back when, but uh, he directed this movie. Uh, he just had the four-hour Justice League Snyder Cut come out a couple of months yeah. ago on HBO Max, you know, so people might be surprised he's releasing another movie so soon. Uh, like I said, it's a zombie movie, but it's also a heist movie. Uh, it's combined into one. Yeah, uh, the previews kind of started off, and you're thinking, oh, this kind of be, could be a cool heist movie. Then it just takes a weird turn. You got zombie tigers showing up. I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, and I wish they would have stuck with that kind of kookiness. There's, you know, there's strippers, there's the zombie tiger, and, and I wish I, I wish it was more fun like that. But it kind of just devolves, and it's mediocre for most of its running time. So uh, would that be that it's going to be one that has a limited run in theaters because it's going to be on Netflix in a couple of weeks, right? Yeah, well, this weekend uh, it's uh, it's coming out, but I think it'll still stay in theaters for a while if you if you're interested in going to see it in theaters. So. So, so yeah. Alex, so, so, so that movie is that from the same? So, is that continuation from Dawn of the Dead? I, no, I love that. I, I don't believe so. I, I you know, I, I didn't do a full research on that to see if it uh, was involved in any way, but it doesn't feel like it at all. And I, I don't think it's really involved. I think just kind of using the the dead name to kind of play yeah. off of it. So, hey, it's a zombie movie. You know <laughs> what? What the heck? You know. So I'll probably see it more than likely on Netflix. But hey, uh, Drunk Bus. Um, this one. It sounds like from the name, there's some possibilities here. How is that one? Yeah, it's, it's one that people might not have heard of. Uh, it's a relatively small movie, but it speaks to a very specific college experience. It's a free bus that takes kids to and from places around uh, this campus late at night. It's mostly plotless, but it works well because of the cast. Um, Charlie Tahan, who people might know from Ozark, and a really interesting guy called Pineapple Tangaroa, who is a Samoan with facial tattoos and odd piercings. Uh, the two of them have great chemistry together. It's 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 really cool. Is that another one that's going to be streaming, or is it strictly in theaters? Uh, no, it's it's in theaters. Uh, it might not be in every theater like the bigger movies, but so you might have to search it out a little bit more. But yeah, you know, the lead character he's dealing with feelings of isolation and being lovelorn, uh, which are probably relatable for a lot of college students, I'd imagine. So um, let's uh, get to the next one. But I want to go back for the first three. Uh, saw yay or nay on your part. No, not for okay. me. <laughs> Army of the Dead, that, that one sounded like a hard no. Not a hard no, but, it, you know, it's it does its job, but okay. it's not going to last uh, long. In Drunk Bus, is that worth the time? Yeah, I, I, I think of those three, that, that was my favorite, and uh, I'd, I'd seek it out if I were you. Here's another one. I saw the, the previews for this last weekend in theaters. Cruella. I didn't think, okay, yeah, I, I'm not sure if I'm into this. 
but it looked interesting. Is that worth the time? It, it definitely is. It, you know, it's at the opposite end of the spectrum from like Drunk Buzz. It's a big live action spinoff from the 101 Dalmatian series by Disney, but with uh, Emma Stone now starring as Cruella. Uh, but it's, you know, it's far from just a kid's movie. It's it's a PG-13 movie that can get pretty dark at times. It gets rid of almost all goofiness in favor right. of scenes that emphasize real character development, which, you know, isn't often the case for this kind of movie. That so, could be a hard audience to find. I mean, Joker was able to do it, but Cruella, not really one you want to take the little kids to, but they're going to want to see this. Yeah, I, I think that... <sighs> It's a it's, it's kind of a mixed bag. You 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 want it. It's obviously aimed at kids in a certain way because it's a Disney movie. But they the filmmakers wanted to make it a little rougher and want to actually go go into the story that you don't often get. And I think with the performances of Emma Stone and Emma Thompson as her kind of rival slash mentor, uh, I think it's really really good movie. Uh, and the last one, um, which a lot of folks are excited about, I'm kind of excited about it, but. After seeing the first A Quiet Place, I never thought they would make a, a sequel to it because the first one just seemed to tie everything up with a bow. It was a great ending, and you were like, oh, great. Yeah, it, it's. I was a bit surprised when I heard they were making a sequel as well, but uh, this is the one from the that was delayed by the pandemic that I've been anticipating most, and it doesn't disappoint. Uh, you know, it has a, a, there's a brief but highly effective flashback scene, but essentially it picks up exactly where the first one left off uh, within dealing with the aftermath of an alien yeah. attack. And I, you get to see a lot more of the monsters this time around, which uh, works. Uh, they're some of the most terrifying creatures you'll ever see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember seeing a little bit of them in the first movie, and they sure are terrifying. All these movies in theater uh, today, as a matter of fact, correct? Uh, the, everything except for Cruella and Quiet Place, those come out next week. Uh, the okay. Cruella will be both theaters and Disney Plus, premium Disney Plus on May 28th, and Quiet Place will be in theaters on May 28th as well. Um, Alex Bentley, uh, good to see you. Thanks for being here. We'd love to have you back on again when you, you know, it's, uh, it's good to see movies back in theaters. I've been going to theaters now for the past couple of months, and uh, my movie pass works again because Regal's finally opened up. So uh, it's great to be uh, get to the theaters. You know, the cool thing, I'm, you know, I don't know if you enjoy this or not, but I like going to the theaters where there aren't a lot of people. You know, you're able to pick out your seat. You know, there's hardly anybody in there. I know it's not really working for the theater business yet, but I, I'm kind of liking that experience. Yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag right now. I, I too enjoy the kind of the get to sit wherever you want to sit, but you know, there's still the necessary COVID protocols that yeah. make it a bit awkward. And I still, I you know, from pre-pandemic when there's a full theater of people, and that's a big part of the, uh, part of the theater experience. And I, I really kind of miss that. I, I hope it gets back to that soon. The one that had the most people in the theater was Kong versus Godzilla, amazingly. There were about 50 people in the theater, and that was the biggest crowd I've seen in the last 13 months. Alex Bentley from Culture Map, thanks for being here today. Thank you so much. All right, we'll see you again. Okay, we are going to move on with our news and announcements. Frank, you know, a uh, big announcement and some big things going on at HCC as we are helping our faculty, staff, and the community get vaccinated if you're not. We are. So HCC Acre Homes Central and Missouri City campuses are offering the first shot of the Pfizer vaccine, which will be at no cost to the public. The shots will be given by the Texas National Guard, the Texas Department of Emergency Management and Fort Bend County Department of Health. So for at Missouri City campuses. So listen carefully, guys, because it's going to be multiple times in, in, in campuses. So it's from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. at Missouri City camp is Wednesday through Saturday, so May 19th through the 22nd, which is tomorrow. The second doses of the vaccine will be administered at the same locations. So from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Wednesday through Saturday, June 9th to the 12th. So walk-ins and drive-ups are encouraged and no appointment is necessary. All full-time, part-time adjunct faculty and staff who receive a vaccine at these locations during scheduled for work hours will not be charged leave. An email, an email from Talent Engagement will follow up with more details and instructions. Okay, so I'm going to skip ahead just to let our director know, and I'm going to skip on down to something I think a lot of our students are interested in. You can check out laptops in hotspots. Thanks to HCC's public service librarians and the Rotaract Club, HCC students may qualify to check out laptops in hotspots for an unlimited amount of time. It's a pretty good deal. You need to connect to the internet to do your work. Well, we've got a solution. Uh, we're gonna have two websites where you can go 
to get more information on this. We will have those links in the social media post for the show. And uh, Frank, we've got a special right now running. Sounds like we're we're a store, but no, we've got a good deal running. Uh, if you would like to be involved in plumbing, you want to be a plumber, we've got a deal for you. It's called Pipe Dreams. So after the winter storm, now is the time to consider an introduction to the plumbing trades. Classes are being held June 21st to July 27th for just $545, and you can apply for a grant as well. So for more information on that, call 713-718-8903. Uh, we're going to have a guest on in the uh, near future from the adult education program, but HCC's adult education program can help you get the skills that you need. Uh, if you are left without a job because of COVID or you're struggling to find some decent work or some decent pay, well, guess what? We can get you the right training. In many cases, a lot of these uh, programs are paid for and uh, very affordable in other cases, but we'll have one link that you can get all the information and we'll have that link in the social media post for the show. Let's tell people about the summer and fall registration, Frank, because we've got five ways you can learn, but the main thing is in-person classes are starting back up in a couple of weeks. Absolutely, so this summer, in-person classes, small face-to-face -face classes, um, uh, uh, for size, for size differential due to social distancing, but there will be classes in person starting this summer. Registration for the fall and summer are starting right now. So the sooner the better to register, the sooner the better chances you get the classes that you want at right. the time that you so wish. So for more information about that and our five modalities, uh, go to accs.edu forward slash now to register. Okay, folks, you've been waiting for this, but uh, Frank is a pretty much a, a, a junior expert on basketball. He's, <laughs> he's moving up the ranks with uh, his basketball knowledge. And he, Frank, what are your predictions for the final, man, for the finals? So I will say this. So the two seven matchup in the Western Conference, the Phoenix Suns against the LA Lakers, yeah. the first time in 30 years that the seven seed Lakers are slated or predicted to beat the number two seed in the Suns, oh, you know, because of the injury that LeBron and AD had to play in. So I'm going to say this. I think the Suns are going to beat the Lakers. So wow. on paper, it's not an upset, but in the NBA world, it's going to be an upset. Yeah. I don't think LeBron is fully healthy. I don't think AD is fully healthy. Chris Paul has gotten a lot of a lot of flack over the last 10 years or so of not getting to the West Coast Finals or the NBA Finals. I think this is the year that they they get they 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 get to the West Coast Finals. So I got the Suns against the Clippers in the West Coast Finals and uh coming out the East, I got Brooklyn coming out. So I got wow. Clippers, I got the Clippers against uh Brooklyn uh for the championship. But I got I got the Suns making a late charge in the West Conference Finals, though. I think they're gonna make some noise. I I don't I think the Lakers have been through too much injury wise. Um, even that game against the Golden State and that playing a couple of days ago, it took a lot out of them from that comeback. Yeah, just Golden State, uh, which was you know battling for us, uh, will not be battling for ACs tonight. So I got I got the Brooklyn winning it all, and I got them beating the Clippers in the NBA Finals. Oh, hold hold on a second. Hello. Hey, it's Adam Silver. He says he's the NBA commissioner. He says he wants to talk to you for some reason, Frank. Um, he, yeah, he's not too happy about that prediction. So uh, he'll need you to call him after the show. No, uh, the NBA is going to hate you for that. Boy, they they are praying the Lakers will make uh, will will head on. But yeah, I see what you're saying. It makes a lot of sense. And there you go. Um, so you think maybe wouldn't it be strange if James Harden like won a championship now that he's left Houston? It won't be strange because you'll have arguably the second greatest, pl uh, second greatest player into the, into this generation, Kevin Durant, playing next to him, and arguably the sixth greatest player in, in Kyrie Irving. So he will have plenty of help. <laughs> so yeah. he won't have to scale the 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 shoulder the whole load at, uh, as he did in Houston. But um, you know, and, and not taking anything away from James Harden, I know it's a lot of bad blood between the Rockets and him. But before he got hurt, he had a really good season. He was on he was in the running for an MVP yeah. tendency. Right, um, right, yeah, yeah. Like well, I mean, I don't know about the bad blood. I, I, you know, he just decided he wasn't going to play for Houston anymore. Unfortunately, he was still on Houston's team when he decided that. So, but there you go. So much is life. You know, good, good luck for him. And he, he, he did a great job while he was here. You know, outstanding player when he was around. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I, I wish nothing but nothing but the best. 
I think it's going to be a fun NBA playoffs. Don't be surprised you see a couple of upsets in the Eastern Conference as well. Wow. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be fun. I, I can't wait to see. I, I think we'll see some some stars, some young stars really come to the forefront, like Devin Booker, you know, like DeAndre Ayton, Luka Doncic. You're going to see some primetime playoff performances, I think, in these playoffs. Okay. Well, my prediction, the Rockets return to the NBA Finals in 2025. That is my Okay, okay. Prediction. All right, we'll go with that. Frank, thanks for being here. We'll see you next Friday, right? Yes, sir. It's always a pleasure. All right, so on Monday, adult high school. Remember, we were talking about them. Uh, They help students with their credit recovery needed to graduate successfully. We'll have someone from there. And also, it's the final week of Asian American Pacific Island Heritage, Heritage Month. We've got a number of guests covered in that area as well. So make sure you join us next week right here. Up to the minute, we'll see you Monday morning, 10 a.m. live.